why everyone was hating on DFT? Huh? Is that why everyone was hating on DFT at the conference? It seemed like that first day. Uh, just to repeat the Cinnabol conference huh? that very first day. They, there was a lot of like arguments going on during like with DFT. Mm -hmm. Is that is that why? Cause yes, yes. Because uh, if you are in presence of uh, um, people who have a lot of experience uh, on right, they uh, let it this um, situation, and they might have contributed to developing arguments for. Uh, uh, developing arguments to protect DFT and tell them still it, it has some value. Uh, this is not the uh, most it is not most precise theory. You cannot uh, hit yourself this uh, fist in the, in the chest and tell that it is absolutely correct. But it is very very uh, optimal balance between numerical cost and and, and um, as we will see through today and uh, it will be maybe one sentence at the end of the lecture but, um, based on the theorems we, uh, it, it can be proved mathematically or at least no one proved otherwise no one objected this point that uh, one can obtain absolutely correct literally uh, correct answer for total energy based on DFT if one knows the uh, heavenly correct function but there is no procedure to find this function so theory is correct if there is a right function but it is uh, um, difficult to find it okay this was a summary the rest will be um, boring preview of what we did before and um, maybe dozen slides of, of the new material. So, <clears throat> the last lecture and today's lecture have nothing to do with uh, practical uh, exercise. They are just background. Uh, if uh, through your career you will be involved in, in discussions and uh, someone will tell your results are wrong, you are using not truly ab initial theory, uh, you can pump your cheeks and eyes and tell there are theories. <laughs> it's it's one of the benefit of, of, of these two, two, two meetings, so that uh, you have a little more confidence in the results, even if they are wrong. They are wrong not because of series wrong, because they don't know the correct function. But uh, there are like several dozen functionals uh, as you seen in, in Belgium and you see in practical exercises with, with stuff. So there is a continuous effort to find the right function. Um, let me probably summarize by words because I was scared by my own slides. <laughs> They're terrible. So um, the theorem that we got last time was uh, something related to absurd, to uh, nonsense. So there was a statement that if one knows the distribution of electron density, then one can find the external potential. And uh, to get this simple statement, one needs to know what is density distribution and what is external potential. So density distribution is just number of electrons per uh, infinitesimal area of space. And uh, external potential is basically electron to nuclear interaction. Why this uh, strange word? It is because this functional theory is, is focused on electrons and everything what is not electron itself is external to electrons. The nucleus are external. So potential exerted by nucleus onto electrons are external potential. And the 
theorem that uh, we have uh, proved last time is that if one knows for sure the density, one can reconstruct potential and fur further. Like if you do not have, um, in all our practical exercises, we start with statistics or set up for this raw model. And then there are, there are procedures that associate attractive potential to this nuclei, then we fill it with electrons and find electronic structure. And then we find total energy and density distribution in it. So uh, DFT, at least in the theorems, in, uh, in the logic, it goes opposite way. So if by some reason we already know distribution of density, we can reconstruct potential and we, we can reconstruct which molecule did generate this potential in which oxidation state and, and, and so, so forth. This was a very theoretical idea in the community because density is a very simple object. It's just three-dimensional distribution of, of uh, three Cartesian coordinates, while wave function that is assumed to be universal. It is uh, Slater determinant of multi-dimensions for each of them. Very multi-dimensional, 100 dimensional, 1,000 dimensional object. And then someone comes in front and tells, it's so garbage. We, we, we can do just with this distribution. It's so easy, so uh, appetizing, so tempting, uh, and people were probably upset. Like, why did I spend all my life on wave function if it is so simple? Your theory is probably wrong. Um, so, one theorem that we went over is that one can reconstruct external potential based on density. And the uh, proof was based if we assume that there is more than one potential, or if we oversimplify it, if this same density can be generated by more than one mole. We proved logically that it is a mathematical absurd through some uh, steps. Each density is a fingerprint of a uh, human. Based on the fingerprint, based on this, one can say who has generated it. Second theorem is that uh, if one knows the density, if it is correct density, then uh, one ideal absolute for true electronic state, then one uh, can get the total energy and it will be true best optimal minimum total energy. We are not talking about um, moving atoms. Atoms are nailed down. We are talking about reconfiguring, uh, trying trying different <coughs> electronic configurations, orbitals, uh, electronic uh, structure. So as you uh, you are exposed to hardware fog theory, and you know that at each iteration, you have kind of electronic structure, but it is not yet ideal. You uh, keep going until you get the minimal possible energy. And when your electronic configuration is, is true, optimal. So the second uh, theorem by Walter Pond, second DFT theorem, is that uh, if you know correct absolute density, you can reconstruct uh, absolute total energy. And uh, it's not telling how, but it is possible. Okay, if you do not object, <laughs> you can stand up a little. Uh, <laughs> The, the the rest will be tortured to me because I, I woke this morning that the slides are terrible and probably tortured for you. Just keep in mind two theorems. One, from density you get external potential. Second, from density you get total energy. That's it. Thanks. Um, the recordings went for two hours and, and half. Uh, but if I would have time, I may condense it. The important information will be 15 minutes time. Uh, so we, we did orbitals and uh, steps. So here are the uh, list of what we are going to present. MED stands for Nigeria's Defense. And uh, Austin, who is not here. It's not his handwriting, it's my handwriting. Spin for, for right. Uh, 
very soon I will announce several possible projects that uh, can be done for um, as, a, as a project in class. I was just starting to do one new project which is biologically oriented, which is I have friends that the department is named chemistry and biochemistry. Uh, but there will be broad variety that you, you can select whatever you do for your primary research with your advisor or I will uh, try to impress you with some opportunities. Um, this one is um, cell membrane with uh, by layer approaching inorganic uh, substrate and it may experience some, some damage. One can tell something about it. On the level of uh, administrative solutions. Um, Foxy ears closed my eyes and went back and relaxed. Um, you, you've heard this. So, uh, in Hartley Fox, you have Coulomb exchange, Fox operator, and there is a regularization of Fox operator, total energy, and uh, the total energy which should be. Uh, its change should be less than tolerant. So the same type of algorithm should be developed for density functional theory. The procedures will be different, but the overall idea is the same. It will be based on the density, not density matrix, but density continuous distribution of density. Uh, electromagnetic wave is dipole times electric field and interaction energy. Uh, if there is more than one charge, you uh, add all of them together. And uh, although the wave functions are not electron, so and it's uh, yet from Hartley Fox, the ability of specific of ground state and specific <laughs> excited state to be uh, promoted from one to another can be reduced to the matrix element in basis of one electron orbit. So although the actual molecules are multi-electron, one can specify the ability of uh, light to matter interaction in the language of uh, one electron orbitals. So if, if one carefully processes multi-electron matrix element of light to matter interaction, it is reduced to transition type of moment matrix element it has two indices involving orbitals that are involved in and it is not the same position and uh, if you are trying to practice this equation in uh, class as we did last, class, last night uh, there is a uh, postulated flex file that contains index of source and target of orbital the uh, three components of transition dipole, then this uh, three components uh, squared, which is uh, times some constant, which is oscillator strength, and energy difference. And based on this information, one can deal with absorption strength for any moment. Uh, we are going to periodic materials, where one repeating itself repeats again and again, same pattern. Uh, this is important if you do nano nanostructures. And wave <coughs> function for these nanostructures um, is getting additional phase as you migrate from one unit cell to, to another. Again, it the same as in between layers. The goal of density function is get, to get total energy. Oh, it works. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never thought it was possible. And uh, one of the simplest examples of density, density function is ancient Thomas Fermi theory, where one splits, removes all ions, considers universe made of L transforming, non interacting, splits universe on, on cubes, formulates the density, and uses the fact that inside each cube, uh, electrons fit state or particle in the box. And if one follows uh, this procedure carefully, so it's the particle of the box equation, uh, one uh, can 
for the number of uh, electrons with specific energy, density of states with specific energy, and then this uh, concept for number and density of states allow to find uh, two things: number of uh, correlate number of electrons in the cube with so-called Fermi energy threshold. After Fermi energy, everything is occupied. After it is unoccupied. And then total energy. And if one makes uh, balancing of these equations, one can get the total energy inside the cube as a function of number of electrons there. If one plays a little bit more with dimensionalities and divide and multiply with the side of the cube, summation over all cubes, one gets total energy as three dimensional integral of, uh, of the density of electrons in specific power. This is one of the examples of function. So the theorem that uh, I did announce and uh, I hope to go into a little bit more details will just justify that. Not only for free electron density but for true molecules, there is a procedure that converts. So if one knows the density, one can find the correct total energy of the system. But the uh, functional dependence, where you need to integrate, where you can have local, is a uh, big problem. Theories. Here is what uh, Alyssa and London wrote last time, teaching us what is function. One uh, converts a distribution into number, it's already a functional. And if it is distribution made of many orbitals, number of atoms is also functional. But we are looking for function that gives uh, energy. Uh, first theorem is based on renaming electronuclear interaction into new external. So we were training, uh, guessing the word also. And uh, the theorem is based on the uh, guess that what if Starting from one density, one can get two different external potentials. And then uh, one merges this um, hypothesis, which later we see what was wrong, with the validation of the theorem, does some uh, mathematical manipulations by adding, subtracting, converting, merging, or depending on the uh, integration of, of, of density with. With the external potential and absurd, um, gets absurdic statement that the same number is smaller than itself, which is uh, unacceptable for rigorous mathematics. Therefore, original statement was wrong. Therefore, second, there is no second branch. There is only one branch. The density allows to reconstruct the. Uh, external potential. And when we were de-writing this stuff, we have noticed interesting thing. If we uh, have, if we do have a term with subtraction of uh, two chromatonium, the difference depends only on the subtraction of external potentials because kinetic energy is the same, and if the number of electrons is the same, the electron electron interaction is the same. And if the, uh, the term with difference of Hamiltonian depends only on the difference of uh, external potentials, there is a, so it is a little intermediate step in the proof, but later we will use this notation and papers on the theory. So typically, you find total energy as rack and cat and operator inside. If your operator is diagonal, you can just multiply initial and final wave function and put in this operator and integrate the space. But if the wave function is the same at left and right, you can replace it by density multiplied by the potential. So it is if we um, step back from quantum 
way of thinking of, on, of looking at things going to a little bit more simplified analysis of uh, distributions. It's probability times observable expectation value. So it is a little uh, simpler way to, to find some value. And uh, this functional theory, in fact, uh, practices this approach a little bit more than other branches of modern science. And uh, in the proof, we just set up the uh, process of this inner point. We decided that from the scope indices, from the scope the indices and recalling our initial statement that there is only one density, one can cancel all these integrals and get this uh, energy of state of branch A plus energy of branch B, and uh, branch B plus energy of branch A is smaller th uh, than another. And this gives us enough justification to cancel original state. So there's no second branch, there's only one branch. Okay. And we find we, we, it is fine to keep believing as we were uh, doing always before that ions are primary source of a molecule. We first we select which elements, which ions, which positions, and then they are applied by the by So this logic of the theorems doesn't tell uh, the like, appearance and uh, sequence of how it was made. It tells just logical connection. If the molecule is already exist, and if you know the density, it allows to reconstruct, based on density, uh, reconstruct which molecule was uh, used. So this is a finger. Last time really was twenty minutes. Uh, so really was too quick. You all know how to do density of states, right? So if if you do atomic structure, you have uh, uh, energies of formulas. And if there are too many of them, then you want to con convert it into continuous distribution. So each line is the rest is a uh, profile. Which you, in equations you can write it as delta function. And here's a literal definition of density states uh, derivative of number of states per energy integral. But practically, we take energy of uh, each orbital and uh, plug it into uh, Gaussian uh, shape and then add together all orbitals together. And then we get this distribution, which is a very comfortable, universal thing to characterize. Molecules, so it's uh, structures, any uh, object that we find or any structure. Um, another thing that I have never announced, but you may get curious and check it out. Basis set. Who was presenting? Well, for Gaussian. You did basis. And you did everything. And you did <laughs> transition state and basis. Okay. So in uh, Gaussian, we were expanding molecular orbitals in basis of atomic orbitals, which seems very natural. But if we are speaking of periodic models, if we allow electrons to move continuously, atomic orbitals do not move, atoms do not. Move. They may, but they do not need to. But even at this at zero temperature, there are solutions when the whole wave function moves with non zero moment. Therefore, for uh, this periodic things, um, sometimes it is much more comfortable to use basis of plane, plane waves. So, um, orbitals, wave functions, anything that's expressed. Not as an expansion in atomic basis, but as an expansion in basis of plane waves. If you were exposed to PKM1, you are well first in plane wave basis and uh, the wave packet disappear on one side and reappear on another. So, 
here is how orbital is saved in the wave card file in the Rust uh, software. So there is a, a lot of clean waves. Each clean wave depends on position. Here is the phase function. And expansion coefficient does depend on the value of moment. So moment is here, moment is there. Integrational momentum gives function that depends on R. So it is a way how you get a regular orbital that depends on position. But inside uh, service files of uh, RASP, it is stored in the momentum space. So only this part is stored. Therefore, it is um, the wave card file is in the uh, machine binary. It's a binary file. You, you would not enjoy it watching by human eye. But even if you could, it would be very non-intuitive. It's just expansion in the basis of plane uh, waves. Not a step function but continuous for which systems for hot metals and uh, the density of state that you obtain in, in the web should look about this this type right occupied unoccupied very soon it was my uh, good intention to offer you a whole lot I'll, I'll try to do, to do it later to uh, look over Anions and cations, when uh, health and occupation is, is removed from here for cation or added here for anion. And as long as you know the, um, if, if you are speaking about optical properties, as long as you do know matrix elements of optimization dipole, X, Y, and Z components, you can take square of each, add together and uh, formulate it in, in terms of uh, the postulated strengths. And then here is the, the equation that we practice. So this, um, we do have two sets of numbers, transition energies and postulated strengths, each of which is uh, indexed labeled by two indices, source, orbital, and target orbital. And if you want to convert this discrete set of information into continuous distribution, we multiply energy difference the resonance condition, energy of incident weight, transition energy, continuous uh, function, which is the Gaussian, multiplied by intensity, postulated strength, and then you get the gain spectrum. If you are doing fluid in the state, your spectrum should look approximately this way. Okay, our tradition, no, still too quick. Probably because of this uh, concurrent laser pointer that I was using for the first time. You have heard of it already, <coughs> at least from me. If you know the total uh, charge density, you get the total energy. Right? So. There is a theorem, and the proof is more straightforward and I would say more boring compared to the previous one. There is no absurd. Okay. So uh, you compose the proof. So you start from, from the idea that you have your total density. And as a Two input things, again, you use variational theorem and first DFT theorem. And at the, at the end, uh, you want to prove that if you know the density, you, you get total energy. So from density, you get total energy. And in order to prove, you uh, utilize variational theorem, which tells that um, if you modify a function away from ideal expectation value of total energy of, of common student will increase. 
And uh, first theorem uh, tells that if uh, we do know sort of density, we know for sure how the external potential will play. So if you merge together these two things, uh, we will get this. And uh, the conclusion for this uh, one and only one uh, correct minimum of total energy will appear from comparison of absolute total uh, electron density and the trial one that you DV uh, already constructed. This is just a repetition of the So the total energy can be expressed we, we want it to be expressed as function of, of the density. But from our previous experience, we typically express energy as uh, expectation value of Hamiltonian operator. So if you want to uh, connect our new knowledge and old knowledge, we need to make a bridge <coughs> between uh, density, Hamiltonian, and then expectation value of Hamiltonian. So um, one of the statements that will be used later is that um, density of electrons is always positive. So uh, there is uh, no spots in space where you have less than zero electrons, which is kind of magic. Uh, we are going to follow the logic of variation of theorem and uh, construct trial density that will, will contain the absolute correct density plus some addition and see what, what happens. So based on the first theorem, we do have a sequence that from, from the density we can reconstruct external potential. And then even if you forget everything last uh, three, four electrons, if you talk only about wave functions, as soon as we have external potential, which de determines the molecule, we can go uh, any other theory and find wave function of Hamiltonian. So the minimum correct reference density will generate us minimal reference, hopefully correct, wave function for this procedure. The trial density will generate trial wave function. Okay? And uh, the idea is that, so 
to here, we are following the straight line. And then we are going to plug in uh, the uh, reference wave function and prior wave function into the variation of theta and see the inequality, which inequality we will generate. The energy for for the trial the function for the trial density can be plugged into variation theta, or we have this imaginary trial wave function that we we assume that we can obtain, and we plug it into the um, definition of excitation energy. Trial wave function and Hamiltonian, which includes uh, kinetic energy, Hamilton Hamilton interaction, and the external potential. Now it can be the same for the uh, wave function that was obtained from uh, reference minimal density or from the drug density. And we want to show the uh, unique and additional logical step to see uh, it will be sufficient for us to, to see that uh, the Expression this trial density, trial wave function must be bigger than uh, expression for reference density. So if you show that it is correct, you will be, you will be fine. Do you understand why it is bigger? It doesn't seem evident for me. What, what about you? There should there should be a logical step telling that So the variation of the theorem tells that uh, we need to make this one. So psi is smaller than psi plus delta h psi delta x. So here we are telling that whatever stays in as an operator, as Hamiltonian, is the same, even if we are um, looking for trial density. So even if we even if we change the density, we are not we cannot change the molecule because we already told that the molecule is the same. So uh, this this one is crazy. Um, so based on first theorem, the uh, Hamiltonian will not change. It will be the same. The only thing that, that will change will be the wave function. And for wave function, if you have the same Hamiltonian and wave function is modified from ideal, then the one with modification will get bigger energy than the reference one. So it, it is kind of a logical trap based on the first theorem. Has it some convincing to you? 
let's let's discuss if you see some uh, some unconvincing or strange things. Through this practice, we may design cross theory in the future, or oppose oppose the theory. Well, if I just wipe off the memory and open this, it would be one idea would be if you change the <coughs> density, the potential should change, and then variational theory will be unapplicable. But there is a trap. It was a previous proof that external potential should be the same. And then variational theorem tells, tells uh, this conclusion. And if we think that it is logical enough, the uh, conclusion is that uh, there is only one total energy that corresponds to reference density. And the uh, analysis of this statement is that based on the density, one always, one should be able to find the total energy. There should be a pathway connecting total density with total energy. But the theorem doesn't tell how to find this part. It just uh, tells that uh, it does exist. Please object or express your concerns. You have a lot of people behind you if you do not like this. OK, no one, everyone wants to lift hand and object? No one, OK, everyone accepts it. So we are completed all hardest parts of the, of the course. The most hardest part of the course was uh, one the time approximation. There were a couple of uh, math uh, intense uh, chapters, and uh, this one was most counterintuitive, logical. It was not quite intuitive for, for our life, it was more to the uh, logic exercise. Um, later on, there will be a couple of strong things, but uh, basically we are going to easier and easier material, at least in, in, the, in the way, or in the amount of interaction level. And we are going to more and more intense in practical aspects. So, there are two theorems based on which uh, use of quick and efficient is justified. First, that based on density one can find external potential, and second, that based on the uh, density one can find one and only one total energy. Yes, I was waiting for it. <laughs> okay, thanks uh, much for your patience for staying here. Um, we do have an, an ambitious plan to present uh, in one week, which is, which is hard. If uh, I would be able to postpone it for, for one week later, it would be really great. But um, in two weeks I will be on, on, on a conference, and I will arrive on Thursday, but uh, I will be on the airplane on Wednesday. So we will, um, in two weeks from now, we will not have Wednesday night. Unless I find a postdoc or graduate student who will conduct it. So there is much, there, there is more argument to, to have the presentations on, on the RASP skills uh, on coming Thursday, which means I need to prepare well and do RASP that very, very intense. So uh, there are three major things that are not covered. And, uh, I really need to, to cover um, the anions and cations. We'll try to do it maybe in homework. It is easy. K vector distribution. It is uh, it is challenging intellectually, and it is not standard practice. Although it is, most of us will, will not need it for chemistry, but uh, for completeness of 
in the course of an interview. And very, very important and uh, practically uh, super helpful thing for any chemist from any physics is uh, molecular model materials and uh, early temperature check. So it is a program for uh, Wednesday, what will be the day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, March 2020. Yeah. Any questions, objections, suggestions? I will ask questions uh, on behalf of you. When you will, will we start practical uh, mini research projects? I think the uh, mo most important question, and I'm very uh, impatient and energetic to start as soon as possible. Um, we lecture on the first week of Tuesday, the first week of March. I will be on a conference. I may mumble something through online, but you, you, you have seen that it is not super informative. So I, I will put some probably boring material. Yeah. First time I come in person, so if it is Thursday on the first week of March, I will probably prefer an overview of possible projects and then we will invest all the time from the labs into uh, mini mini research. So what day is it again? Huh? What day is it going to be done? Tuesday. Like this Tuesday? No. Tuesday. When Tuesday okay. less. When Tuesday later. Okay, so that's the same thing. Yes. Okay. Whatever. Third, second, okay. Okay. Got it. So I'll just broadcast. Enough, enough. I don't want to hold you. Uh, everyone is free. Let's let's go to our other, other errands. I'll stay here and answer questions if any, but if no, I will be happy to go to other errands as well.